Hey, what's up guys? It's Franchise923, and in this video, I want to show you how you can download and install VMware's ESXi, uh, which is a hypervisor, onto a Dell R710. So that server back there is a Dell R710, and currently, or actually previously, I had Proxmox installed on it, which is uh, a free and open source hypervisor. Um, but recently, I got the itch to try out ESXi, so um, earlier, actually last night, I installed it on that Proxmox. And before I go any further with experimenting with stuff, I'm just going to redo that whole process and show you guys exactly how, how I installed it. Um, so with that, let's just jump right in. So this is it up and running right now on that Dell R710. Um, so I'm just going to show you what it looks like, and then we're just going to wipe it clean and, and start fresh. Um, so yeah, this is what it looks like when you log in. You can see it's on the Dell R710. Um, one thing to note, I had to install version 6.7 uh, instead of 7, which I think is the current version of ESXi, and that's because the Dell R710 is not supported on 7, uh, which is understandable because um, the power edge is like 10 years old, so um, no problem. They still offer this 6.7 version to download. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, so first, let's download this VMware ESXi. And I actually just tried to do this before I started the video and it looked like their downloads page was not working. Um, so I went to download hypervisor and of course they're on the temporary maintenance um, right now. So I'll, I'll make a little, um, a little supplemental video later and just show exactly how I downloaded this. But um, I already have this ISO downloaded um, in my downloads folder. So it's a pretty simple process. You just, you need to make an account on VMware and then download the ESXi vSphere. Um, but this is what the ISO looks like right there. So I originally tried seven first and it didn't work. So then I had to go to 6.7. So just make sure you get this uh, installer ISO file. And then once we do that, we're gonna need to um, burn it to a, a USB stick. So I always use Rufus to, to burn to um, USB sticks. So just make sure it finds the right USB device. So that's what mine is called. Um, and you can see it here, right here. I just need to find that and then just find the ISO file 6.7 and just start burning this and just click OK. Alright, so I finished, it took like two minutes. Um, so let's close it. And now I'm actually going to log into my Dell R710. So the way you can do that is through iDRAC. So this just happens to be how I can access my iDRAC. Um, and the Pass, username's root, password is Calvin, C-A-L-V-I-N. And I'm just doing this so I can restart the, um, the server. Before restarting, actually, remove your USB drive from your computer and plug it into the back of the R710. Okay, so I just um, got up and plugged the USB stick that has ESXi on it into the power edge in the back. And now I'm going to click power on off and I don't know if you can hear but you might be able to hear the server in the background if I'm quiet you can probably hear that running so when I power it off you should hear it get quiet for a second okay hear how it's quiet now <laughs> so that's because it's turned off um, so yeah now that the USB is plugged in let's power back on and click OK. And in a few seconds, should hear it start up. All right, there it just turned on. And now I'm actually going to open this virtual console preview so we can see what's going on in, inside the server. So. If you're having trouble getting this to launch, um, watch one of my previous videos on how to do that. I'll put it in the description. 
because um, it took me a... I had to configure a few things. Basically, you just need to um, change some things with how Java starts it. Um, so this is just going to allow me to not have to plug in a monitor, which is nice. So again, this is showing me what is actually going on inside the server. So the same thing as if you were to plug in a monitor directly into that server. So what we need to do now is just we have to get into the BIOS um, of of this and we need to start that USB stick. We need to boot from the USB stick. Because if I don't boot from the USB stick, it's just going to start um, ESX, ESXi up again. So right now you'll notice this isn't going to work because my server's not running it yet. It's still booting up. Um, so before it boots into ESXi, we need to boot into that USB stick. So this this can take like a few minutes. All right, at this one of these screens, we're going to hit F12, I think. Yeah, or F11. We want to get into the BIOS boot manager. So just hit F11. Oops. F11, and it says entering BIOS boot manager. And this is sometimes kind of slow. All right, so it's doing something different now. So basically just listing what devices or, you know, what's installed. I just heard the hard drive spin up, like the RAID drive spin up. So I guess the RAID controller just booted up. Okay, so these are my drives. This five terabyte, um, that's a hard drive that I have. Um, it's just one single drive plugged in. This is four, um, four I think 250 disk gigabyte drives in I think a RAID 10 array. And this is what we're actually going to install ESXi on, this 557 um, gigabyte drive. Uh, okay, so I need to hit control E right here. Control E. Just hit it a bunch of times to make sure it gets it. Okay, this can take like five minutes. So let me just pause the video for a sec. All right, so that screen finished. So now what it is doing? Scanning for devices. All right. Okay, so now let's go to, this is kind of a little confusing. You need to go to hard drive C, which doesn't make sense. And then we have to go to the back USB. So this is our USB stick plugged in the back. So just click that. And now it's gonna attempt to boot from there. And you can see um, it's already showing, so I'm just going to hit enter there. This is coming straight from the USB drive, and you can see it's loading the ESXi installer, so this all looks good. So just let this load, and we should be um, prompted with like a startup installation menu soon. All right, it's still loading. So it's recognized our hardware. Okay, so after that loaded, we're presented with this. Um, just hit enter to continue. So what does this say actually? That's fine, hit enter. And F11. Okay, so now it's asking what disk do we want to install ESXi on? And you can see all of, all of our drives are listed. So this is my hard drive. This is a single hard drive I have in there just for storing data like movies and music. Um, the next one. This is where we want to install it. And it's actually selected, it looks like by default. That's my RAID um, with the SAS drives. And then that is the USB stick. So we don't want to do it that. We don't want to install it on itself. So. Just click wherever you want to install it and hit enter. Okay, so since I already have ESXi installed on it, it's saying, well, how do you want to handle that? You're probably going to see something different or not, not even see this. So I'm just going to totally overwrite this. 
because um, I want to start fresh. And now I'm going to hit enter. And now this is the actual install, so uh, just give it a password. Whoa, the keyboard just went a little crazy there. All right, hit enter. I did notice that, so this is saying, this was the same, a similar error I was getting when I tried it with version seven of VSXI. But this warning is just saying this CPU may not be supported in future releases. And sure enough, it wasn't supported in seven. So this is just a warning that like, hey, this is, this is the last version that this CPU will be supported. So that's fine. So just hit enter and that's fine. Just hit F11 and now it's installing. So I will say like this install process was a bit smoother than the Proxmox install. Um, I remember the Proxmox install, there were a bunch of, you know, a bunch of questions I had to fill out that I wasn't really sure what exactly to do and I had to Google it. Um, but with this, there was like one or two questions and it's installed, um, which is nice. So yeah, just let this run. And I'm pretty sure after this, it's just a matter of rebooting um, the server and then, um, then it's up and running. So yeah, let me pause the video and let this install and uh, we'll resume shortly. All right, so it finished installing and now it's just saying um, reboot it, but before you reboot it, just remove the USB stick. So go ahead and remove the USB stick and then hit enter to reboot the server. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna remove the USB stick and let the server reboot and then uh, we'll pick the video up from there. All right, so I just hit enter and it's uh, rebooting. Shutting down some stuff. Should hear the server turn off shortly. Okay, I guess it didn't do a hard reboot. Um, could, so you see it just restarted. Um, but yeah, this could take like 10 minutes, so I'm going to pause it. So you see it's restarting. Don't hit anything. Just let it do its thing. Um, don't go into the boot manager. Eventually, after it goes through all its startup processes, it's it's going to boot into ESXi, and that's what we want. So just be patient. Let it boot up. All right, guys, 10 minutes later, uh, we're up and running. So this is what uh, we see inside of our server. And it says right here to manage this host, go to, and it gives us this IP address. So that was easy. We didn't have to configure anything. It just gave us this by default. So um, I'm going to go to this IP address. And look, it already went there because I had it open from previously. Um, but yeah, just proceed to it. And here we are. So this is our ESXi up and running. So um, default username is root and put in the password that you gave it earlier and i'm going to uncheck that and click ok and here you go there there it is we're up and running um awesome that wasn't very painful at all so i'm pretty impressed with this so far i think the install process was easier than proxmox um so yeah in the next video i'll show you how we can just um, it, it, uh just get a, a vm up and running um, um yeah hope that was helpful and thanks for watching